So I'm going to ask you guys to introduce yourself. Okay. So, my name is Rob Sammy Dexa. Uh, yep. Today I have Sena with me. Uh, we made uh, the uh, 16th. Was that 16th? Yeah. The, you know it's crazy how we met. Yeah. You always tell us. <laughs> did your mom tell you about it? No, she told her too. I told her. Oh my god. <laughs> because it was so crazy. I went to Atlanta. It was the, the first Oromo convention. Yeah. Hundreds of people from all around the world. It was the most exciting time. We felt like we were making really tangible differences. Everybody was so excited and so united. And then I met him through my friend, and then he's like, "He, you just graduated high school, something like that." Yeah, something yeah, like that. yeah. And he, you had taken a bus to come all the way there. That just blew my mind. And still today. Before that, actually, I remember what happened. I think it was Abraham, right? We're yeah, yeah. Abraham is the one that introduced us. And then I think out of nowhere, she came. And she was like, uh, "Hey, uh, you go get, uh, go find me a charger." For you me a phone or something that's what she said <laughs> to you or to, uh, <laughs> to me so, like, she talking to you like, <laughs> <laughs> I really did that yeah, yeah she does like, and then he was like oh you don't know we just introduced each other he introduced us to each other and then that's how we know and now we start talking oh about, like, and then I took you to dinner yeah and then I'm like I must pay for you yes. and then <laughs> Yeah, so, oh, see, I don't, see, I don't record that part. Yeah, <laughs> I don't record that part, me ordering you or telling you to bring me a charger. I do have that uh, tendency. I didn't hear that before somebody else. <laughs> the best part she remembers about you taking the bath from here all the way by yourself to that's the town. Yeah, that's what I did. Yeah, yeah she always talk about that. That just honestly blew my mind for you, be, for you to be a young uh coming from all the way from DC and that requires and I know it required a different type of commitment That's and the passion that I was crazy like that but you don't see that from young people especially Americans you know what I'm saying they're so busy with their own life the last thing they want to know is see another Oromo people you know young people like they don't want to be around Oromo. I have a lot of nephew and brothers and who are like you're on your age they don't want to be around Oromo but for you to go to go that far to be around so that that impressed me and still that's sure. why I actually for sure. yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, yeah after that I think we did a, we started the mm. HR yep. Day yep. we were working on the HR and you guys did a lot of things you like you guys did a, the DCU did a lot of campaign for us. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about coalition of uh, Oromo uh, human rights yeah. and democracy. Yeah. Because I remember how crazy you were about the idea when you first came with it. So actually one of the things when I think about it that surprises me is you used to be so passionate about it. It's like, guys, it's going to work this time. I remember yeah. a big community. Yes, a the lot, first night. Yeah, a lot of people and stuff. And you were telling them, it's going to work this time. We have to use this moment. I remember how excited you were. And a lot of resolutions have been passed before. So right. It was this kind is of the first like, time, yeah. people are like, okay, sure. But, but you were so excited. I remember that. Yeah. See, that was, uh, so that the first one was early 2016, before the convention. Yeah. So like, hundreds of people came at the hotel. And nobody really knew how what to do. You see, the Roman people in the past 20 years, we come here, we protest, you know, down, down, whatever way, Yanni, that, you know, the slogan a lot of people use, and we scream, we go home, and that's it. That's it. And you never heard any tangible uh, response from the U.S. government. So this time, the time that you saw me, I, I work with advocacy organization, another advocacy that is uh, part of the former Clinton administration, and I learn how they actually do. How so the difference before uh, the old advocacy or what people did and the one we did. The difference is before it was just about bringing hundreds of people to protest and go back home, but this time we became systematic. You know, through that education, I learned. I'm like, okay, we don't need hundred thousand people to come here. Sure. It is about looking at the system what do we know who need to talk to who you know what I'm saying so one of the things I did um, and, and I, I say this often is it is the work of uh, lots of people a lot of people but one thing I did and I took uh, the first step it is kind of educating the Roma people what we are asking for yeah. in the past or when people will go to the office, cry for 10 minutes or 20 minutes, and come out, and they feel like somebody heard them. But the challenge is this Congress people, hundreds of people come and talk to them. Yeah. Why should they care about Oromo? Yeah, you know, so the thing is, so strategically we convince uh, the older people, especially, who are committed, that like, look, 
We, or they don't care about you if you went to jail. Well, we are there for only specific question. This is the letter, and this is what we're asking for, and that's it. That's and good. then, yeah, and then tell them like relationship. It that's was about like relationship. You, you're very straight to the point. Yeah. You're very strategic. It was. I remember. Yeah, I was very aggressive. <laughs> I, I hear that a lot from. Yeah. What do young people think about me? I'm just curious, like because the people we did work on with the youth, the, African, yeah. uh, the American kids, and you guys did like the one we did together. But I've never really had a chance. Uh, I do believe the future of advocacy, and I see that it's like would depend on you guys. Yeah. You guys are the next phase, the next page to help us strategically plan. You know, it took us going through a uh, really unique time as well as the normal people. This is kind of our time. But it's slippery slope, you know, you can easily yeah. lose it and, you know, we're probably going to talk later, a lot of confusion is going on. What, what do young people think? I mean, what, what did the OERDC, uh, what, what did they thought about the advocacy and what, what was the first thing that, you know, came to you guys? I remember we actually helped you guys, uh, I remember when we were in the board, we were actually doing a lot of things, yep. we were deciding, hey, uh, Sena told me this, what do you guys think about it, and then it was... Uh, as a board, we agreed on different things and how it could yep. help us and uh, how we could do our part. And that's when you know we helped with the videos, we helped yeah. with the uh, and the flyers, uh, and exactly. yep, and they come out and you guys gave us a, a lot of uh, rights and picked up. That was that's just, to me it was so impressive that's to see good. young people yeah. uh, that kind of dedication. Well, I mean, do you see that the same thing going on right now with you guys? Or what's going on with the young people? I'm curious. A lot of people always have you. <laughs> Let's talk about that. Like, what's going on in the young people's mind nowadays, especially even since the change came? The time is confusing right now. So <laughs> <laughs> ever since I became, I think uh, it has changed a lot. Uh, I was actually going to say before, I was about to say that one of the uh, genius things you did was with the American kids, how you, uh -huh. how you used, mm -hmm. how, that, how that happened, I think that's one of the smartest strategies mm -hmm. you've used actually, because I like it so much, where high school, they were high school students. Yes, some right? university, yeah. some, oh, a couple of them from Harvard University, the white girl and the white guy was from uh, Harvard, yeah, and, and they, so high school. I remember they went to talk to Congress, to yep. the representatives, mm -hmm. one by one, about one, Oromo, one was, exactly. Uh, that was amazing, that was very... I think that played a huge oh, role. Oh, it did. I mean, you got the meeting room they gave us. You saw that yeah, meeting room. The first room. It was. It's the we never get that yeah. kind of room. Yeah. yeah. HR, and uh, honestly speaking, I think we said we talked about this history. I think H HR 120 passing has has done a lot, and in my own opinion, to scare the repressive region to TPLF yep. or anyone the PRD to change course. I really believe because Abi. Uh, came like they they made all this administration mm -hmm. change Immediately. right before, eight yeah. six days before the yep. votes was about to go down. Mm -hmm. Right. It, yeah, and I mean the it's thing is they were talking behind scene. They're saying that we will make the change. We will make the change. No, I mean himself. You know, I attended the Jama uh, uh, meeting or conference. The OD when PDO became ODP. Okay. I was there, and one of the things that was behind closed door. It talked about was the pressure of the international community is the number one that led to change. Yeah. They say he he said I don't know you know how much uh, he means it or if he means it, but at least he said that the number one thing that played role for change was the, the international pressure. So definitely in an international pressure, U.S. plays the front row. Whatever U.S. say, whatever God says, is the same thing. You can't really differentiate what God says and what the U.S. government says. That's true. That's true. <laughs> People follow. I actually have an interesting question with you. I was uh, the House was Republican, mm -hmm. or Republicans this time. Mm -hmm. We had resolution where we started where it was Democrats mm -hmm. and stuff, but they didn't support us as much as this administration, uh, the Republican administration. So do you think for normal people or human people in general, do you think the Republicans are better over the Democrats or you know, what do you think? And so the thing is, uh, one thing I didn't know, one of my challenge was that um, so when Obama came to power, a lot of Clinton people came back to power. Yeah. Uh, and the Clintons had a relationship with the TPLF. Yeah. Personal relationship with the uh, Malas and with the, they brought these people in the 1990s, you know. They were the ones supporting them financially, strategically, militarily. So these are the friends. So they were not so pro or more so because pro movement. They, they kind of were kind of semi-satisfied with the status quo, you know, the way things are. So what 
Trump came to power. Trump is outsider. Yeah. He doesn't know what the heck he's doing. Yeah. All he thinks is like it's about his ego. He feels like you know, if I get to Trump and I talk to him and I tell him to bomb somebody, he probably would. <laughs> That's what I think, you know. So it's like Trump is he wanna do him Trump. Yeah. He don't give a shit about nobody yeah. else. So that kind of gave us a perfect chance to reintroduce ourselves. Because Republicans hated the Clinton so much, anybody else, they were willing to kind of embrace. But now the Democrats took back to the House control, and that is actually one of the reasons I'm here. Okay. Meeting the new staffers, okay. meeting the, you know, Omar, the Somalian, the Elhan Omar, meeting the Eritrean guy from uh, Colorado. Colorado right? yeah. yeah, so meeting their staff and kind of like, okay, <clears throat> yeah, transition did happen in Ethiopia. Uh, still going on so uh, one of the things we're concerned is there's a lot of interest from Middle East mm -hmm. and Asian countries to influence Ethiopia mm -hmm. this country they're not even democrat themselves what they are interested in is about ripping our country off and it's about uh, dividing our people and it's about um, the mineral things that we have. That's what they are interested in. And I don't see the government being so excited or, you know, towards the West. I don't really see, especially the U.S. And I did have a, a talk with the high officials in Ethiopia from Oromos as well as uh, at the embassy. So one of the things I wanted to do was like, how can the U.S. make sure this transfer into democracy mm -hmm. that I mean, he would not become another dictator like Malas because he think he's doing such a good job that we don't need another leader and that he's you know we don't we don't want him to feel that and they do have that concern and and just like we do uh, we do try to do things you have the Amharas you get the Tigris and then you get the Ethiopians yeah. you know they are this sector of the, uh, the Ethiopian population uh, the elites, they're very small, but they're very vocal and powerful. So they are staying in this, you know, conversation here in the uh, West and trying to point that uh, Oromos are displacing people in Oromia. And oh, it is true, there's a lot of displacements happening, but the number one victims are Oromos. But the way the, sometimes the, the media portrays uh, Oromos as the victimizer, but almost actually, <clears throat> In my opinion, it's quite, they're the victim, you know, even by the government and even by other, you know, you can take the case of Harari, you know, in Harari, East Roma, you can take the case of what happened in Borana, Guji, in Wallaka. In the lots of parts of Romania, there's no stability in Romania and change did come, but what did the Oromo people get? Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? And then, you, you, you know, it's, it's amazing that you hear some people, some uh, opposition parties want to come out talk about we are not for uh, federalism, right? That's right. Right. That's what 